I was curious to see how my LG wing was doing because it had been a little bit. So I got it out, updated it, and was pleasantly surprised. I still think this phone has a lot to offer as we head into 2023. A couple different things. We'll get to performance in a moment, but I'll tell you this right off the bat. It may seem like a small thing for a lot of people, but there's a significant number of people when I review a flagship device that say they refuse to upgrade from something like a Note 9 or an older Samsung or an older Sony or something like that unless the phone has expandable storage. And of course, as you know, the landscape for expandable storage flagships, it's a little light these days and it's not likely to come back anytime soon. So this is a phone that still has a micro SD card slot. You can have expandable memory up to two terabytes. It comes with 256 standard, but you can get the two terabytes of expandable storage if you need it. So if you're somebody who needs that phone, if you were on a much older device from say 2016, 2017, and you've been holding out, you've been holding on because you, none of the flagships impress you and you absolutely need that expandable storage, well, here's something that's relatively up to date, still performing well, which we'll go over, that has expandable storage. So let's talk about that performance. Snapdragon 765G, which seems like it was in every mid-range to upper tier device for two years ago, whatever, when it started coming out, maybe even close to three. Now, still running well. We'll go ahead and pull it up. The optimization, so it's a pair between the 765G and the optimization that LG has. But we'll go ahead and pull up Twitter here on Android 12. And you can see after it loads, pretty smooth experience. Not the stutters that you get with a lot of other Android Twitter experiences. Pretty good. We'll go ahead and pull up Instagram here. And you can see different experiences after it loads up. Nice and smooth. I can tell you Facebook runs the same. Performance with that and games is pretty good. The switching back and forth between the multi-screens and the just regular slab screen is nice. It's smooth. No hiccups there. I'm not having the issues that I had originally with the LG Wing. When I first got it, and I think it was on Android 10, I was having a lot of issues with the fingerprint sensor. It's still, it's not the best fingerprint sensor in the world. It still has its problems, but I'm not getting the software glitches and hitches, half the screen turning green and flickering, that type of stuff that I would get previously. I know some people were still experiencing that the last time I did a wing update, but let me know because now we're running the December 2022 patch. So they're out of the mobile business. I understand. I know it's in their best interest to keep their promises to update this phone because they're still selling their televisions and dishwashers and laundry, whatever. They still have products, so it's not like they're out of business. So it, it's in their best interest to keep their name in good standing. But to see them come out, not just release security patches, but to actually work on the optimization and have it running well and improve things, glitches that were on the phone previously, is impressive to see. So kudos to LG, full marks there. Some of the shortage stuff, you're going to come in a little light on battery. 4,000 milliamp hours has not exactly aged well. You're still looking at four and a half hours of screen on time. If you're very careful, you could get that to five, which for most people is going to be just fine. In fact, that's with me running the brightness all the way up and all the things that I do on it. That's my battery life. Your battery life may change. One of the reasons why, if you're one of those people that just wants a phone, you need the expandable storage, you're waiting for something. This is still going to be updated. This is slated early this year in 2023 to get Android 13, which is absolutely nuts to think about, but I'm actually excited to see it. They did a good job with their Android 12 implementation. A lot of manufacturers struggled when it came to battery life. The battery life wasn't strong on this device to begin with, but it didn't kill it on Android 12. And the smoothness of this was just great. Love it. Really excited to see what they could do with Android 13. Of course, we'll be playing with that when it comes out early this year in 2023. But otherwise, a lot to like here. 6.8 inch OLED display on the main panel. You got that pop-up camera for the front uh, selfie cam, which everybody was excited about. You got some cool things on the back with the gimbal and there were some other things. So let's go into multi-screen mode and pull it up. And you can see there's the gimbal action here where you can move the camera up and down and side to side while you're holding it. You could use this as kind of a grip, a camera stick, if you will, and be able to take images from the back and record your movies and not have, by having that gimbal, you don't have the juddering and stuff like that when you're just moving around or you're running with it. It's a little bit smoother action on your video. There were some cool things with this for sure, especially when you're talking about the secondary display. And there's a lot of use to that. 
that secondary display. So let's pull up YouTube. Let's go into this mode and pull up YouTube. And let's say you're doing nothing else with it. You're not using the multi-apps, which we'll go over in a moment. You just want to watch YouTube. Well, you pull it down and you go into grip mode. So you could just kind of hold it like a, like a grip stick. And instead, when you're watching something in landscape, which is the preferred viewing widescreen for YouTube, any sort of content, you could do that now one-handed with this phone. And that is phenomenal to me. I can't tell you how nice that is to be able to watch content like this and not have to hold the phone with both hands. I, I tell you, I've told this story before. I'll be having a coffee. I'll be eating something, whatever it is. And I can have this in one hand and have my other hand free to grip something else, a bag, a door, whatever, I, whatever I'm doing. It's nice to have that. And then when, of course, I'm done watching, I turn off grip lock. There's the other stuff with the this kind of fidgety touchpad type thing you could go into if you do that. If it's kind of a jittery, so if you want that 90s laptop simulator or something like that, you can have that with the touchpad, but there's cool things. And then there's the app pairings, which are great. And my favorite one, whoops, as we drop it, my favorite one that I've shown before is the NFL app and the fantasy app, so I could watch whatever my teams are doing up top, but I could also have my fantasy scores down at the bottom, and then I could be watching a game in landscape up top. Really useful. I'll tell you, over time, this is one of the ones, you, you might, a lot of people said, oh, it's a gimmick, it's not dual screens, it's not really dual screens. This is one opportunity or one instance where something like that didn't wear on me. It actually gained in usefulness as I went along using the device. At first, you might think, oh, well, how many times am I actually going to do this? That seems like it would be annoying. I'm not going to do that very often. I'm going to use it like this, and I have to deal with the extra weight and the durability concerns with the flip out of the screen. It's useful. And it's useful in a way that's more useful than like when Samsung had that air right thing for the Note 10 where you're like AR doodling or something like that. Significantly more useful than that. It was not a gimmick. It may have been a different convention that we weren't used to, but it certainly doesn't fall into the category of gimmick, which is where a lot of people thought it would be and where it didn't wind up. But with performance, with it being updated... The downside is going to be the price at this point. Unlike Chef Pusheen here, they're not cooking up any deals on the LG Wing. You, there was a time a few months ago, in fact, the last time I did a video on this, where you could grab one of these for almost, I think, sub 300 bucks. Certainly in the 320 range. I think I, I got mine around a 320 for this device, which was a steal. Now, link will be in the description, 449 and much like the original Surface Duo when they upgraded it to Android 11 and it got that extra usability there on the device and they fixed a lot of the problems, I think people have recognized that they're going to support this device. The supports are good. It's not just support in name only. They're not just pushing out an update. Whatever happens, happens. They're actually working actively on making this phone a better experience with each update so that the price reflects that. It's gone up. It's one of the few phones that's gone up in price as it's gotten older, because people are now confident that LG is going to stick by it and work and give the updates that they promised. So is it worth that? No, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of uh, heavy competition in that price range at 449 for brand new devices. But, but that being said, if you're somebody who needs that expandable storage, if you absolutely love the idea of the dual displays and you're not quite ready for something like a Galaxy Fold, but you like the idea of more screen real estate or more flexibility with your screen real estate and using it and perhaps multitasking, because this, outside of the Surface Duo devices, this has to be the second best implementation for multitasking. The Fold 4 has gotten a little better with Android 12L, but this to me, because of the aspect ratios that you have here, there's a lot more flexibility in the apps and the usability of the apps on this device. But overall, really good stuff. Love what they've done. A shame that LG is not still around to keep providing interesting stuff like this, but overall, I love it. I usually don't have cases in this video. I'll include a link to this one as well. I just put the back of the Spigen Thin Fit or whatever this is on here. It's got that nice soft touch plastic rubberized touch to it nice grip and of course you can have the flip out and no problem with the pop-up selfie camera i like it i personally would love to get this kind of in the 300 range low to mid 300s i think there's a lot of utility there if you're into the special features of this device still even with updates yet to come in 2023 so a lot to like here if you've made it this far like comment subscribe all that fun stuff until next time have that steve